Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Windsor Star News Cafe. I'm Don MacArthur here with Dylan Christie and our special guest, uh, Daniel Abel, sir. Uh, he's running in Ward 1. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. Now, you've been busy. Uh, you did come into our open house where we had candidates come in and record their pitch. Uh, so we appreciate you coming in. Uh, that was phenomenal. But you've been busy. Uh, we took a look at your uh, website uh, this week, and you have a pretty detailed platform of what you'd like to see done in Ward 1. Uh, the one thing that really jumped out you said you want to be an ambassador, that even if you don't uh, necessarily agree with the ideas, uh, you st that still won't prevent you from uh, bringing those forward and presenting those to council. Well, thank you. I, I think one of the really important questions to ask candidates is how they see their role as councillor. And often what you, what you read in the paper on Tuesday mornings after the big divisive votes is the things that make news. But really, my view is that the primary role of a councillor is to be your ambassador to City Hall. It's to help to fix the problems, to make sure that if there's a concern on your street, the administration knows and that it's properly directed. So we have services available such as 311 and other services to allow that direct connection, but it's really the, the councillor's job to make sure that that's as seamless as possible. So my number one commitment is really doing that constituency work. The, the, the big decisions, the divisive decisions are the ones that grab headlines, but it's my view that the, the most important role is, is to be your ambassador at mm. City Hall and to be the ward's ambassador. Okay, so I heard off camera you're talking about you're knocking on about 8,000 doors or trying to get to a bunch of doors. You might not get to them all. Um, what are they telling you uh, out there? And uh, it seems to change street to street, you're saying. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's really great to get out and speak to the residents. There's about 8,000 houses in Ward 1. I sadly won't be able to hit them all, but I, I'm trying to hit pockets in different areas because I'm finding that as you go street to street, you, you hear different concerns on each street. So the, the traffic concerns on one street are going to be entirely different than the traffic concerns two streets away. So the, the main concern that I'm hearing and the biggest concern that I'm hearing really is the infrastructure concern. It's the, it's the flooded basements, it's the traffic, it, and it's the, it's the roads, traffic particularly on Cabana Road, but, but other places around schools as well. So I think the primary concern of residents in Ward 1 and in South Windsor is is the infrastructure concern it's the it's the it's the concern about not having the flooded basement I'm hearing from residents you know sure I'd love my taxes to go down I want them to stay the same but at the same time I don't want to be paying to you know I don't want to be paying 10 or 20 thousand bucks to, to dig out from a flood okay just on taxes do you think there's been a tax freeze there's a lot of back and forth all the mayors are saying both camps saying different things. You know, you can spin it in many different ways. I think that our administration, that our current city council administration has fought hard to keep taxes as low as possible, and that, and that really goes to the rate. Now, certainly, if your assessment has gone up, your taxes has gone up because you multiply the two together. There's also, I agree, if your costs have gone up, if your utility costs have gone up, if your sewer charges sewer surcharges have gone up that's it, it it's coming out of the same pocket it's coming out of your same bank account so frankly all you care about is, at the end of the day is how much does it cost to live here and how much would it cost to live somewhere else so there's certainly been an increase in what it costs residents to reside in the city of windsor but but i think that our council has done an admirable job of fighting fighting where they can to try to do the best they can with taxes and we've seen that in holding the rate Excellent. Uh, well, one thing that you mentioned in your platform as well uh, is that it's important to know your ABCs, the municipal agencies, uh, boards, commissions, and corporations. Yep. Um, one thing that's kind of come out too, uh, one of the front runners has said that uh, should he be elected uh, as mayor, he would prefer not to be on some of the, the boards. Um, he would, or he would uh, not take that pay. That would go along with that. Is that something that you would actually vote for, um, that you would like to see, uh, that you would support? If, say, so I guess what I'm trying to say, uh, if Milson got on and he said that he would take a cut for it. Councillors have to vote on that. Is that something that you would support? You know, I, I certainly, any decision that comes up, I look at, I hear from everyone, yeah. I look to what administration is saying, but I, but I do have some concerns about that. I think that I, I'm a young person, I'm a young professional, and the, the, the base council pay is $28,000 for, right. for what's effectively a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you have your, your board pay as well, it bumps it up to in the range of $42,000. So my, my initial concern is that are we going to cut out young people, people who have young families who are doing this as a full-time job because working on $28,000 for that full-time job 
if you want to get those skilled people, make, make cut some people out of the mix. So I certainly, my starting point is that, that I have some concerns with it. It's not something that I would come out of the gate and endorse, yes, absolutely, Let, let's cut down to, to $28,000, but, but I'll hear everyone out on the issue and I'll have that discussion. Last one. Yeah, exactly. If you want low pay for lots of work, don't get into politics, get into journalism. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you're a lawyer? Yes, I am. Okay. And uh, when you were going to law school, I think, so this might be your first time running for office, but you're no stranger to City Hall. No, I'm, I'm no st stranger to City Hall. When I, well, when I was in undergrad, and I went to undergrad at the University of Windsor, and I studied political science, and I took a lot of courses in, in municipal government, so I, so I have some of that background. And it provided me with the opportunity to work at the city, at the city of Windsor, for um, one semester and then two summers. I worked full time for two summers. So I have some experience at City Hall. Um, I, I, I know the players, or I, I knew the players then, and, and I knew the way that the, the city operated from the inside administration side. So I think that that does give me a bit of a leg up in terms of being able to hit the ground running if elected, because I, I know the way that things work their way through the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, a uh, big point of contention uh, between the mayors and uh, several council candidates uh, is an auditor general, whether we have one, whether we need one. Um, do you think sort of somebody like PricewaterhouseCoopers is sufficient, uh, as Dilkin says, or should we have a full-on uh, auditor general? Well, we need the function of the full auditor general. How we get there is something that's open that, that's open to debate, and I, I think that we need the function. So I have concerns that when we when we terminated the employment of the in-house auditor general, we didn't add to the function. I understand what Councillor Dilkins is saying about. Really, most of that work gets outsourced anyway to Price Waterhouse Coopers. But I think if, if we had the role at one point, there's clearly a value to having that role. So, so we need to have we need to have the role and responsibility met. But I, so, I, I like the idea of reinstating an in-house auditor general. But I'm also prepared to have the discussion with councillors and with administration as to what other methods can we use to ensure that the role is fulfilled. Cool. All right. Well, I just will throw a soft one at you then. Um, you're telling us earlier that you're going to be going straight to work from here. Uh, you'll probably be the one shutting off the lights at the law firm. Um, you're a busy guy. Uh, what motivated you to actually run for council? Why did you want to get into this? Well, well thank you. That's a great question. I, I grew up in South Windsor, so South Windsor's home to me. That's why I'm running in Ward 1, where I live now. And I, I've been really lucky to grow up there. It's, it's provided me with great opportunities, but I, I want to be part of that growth and continuation mm -hmm. to make sure that um, that when I have kids or when my friends have kids 20 years from now, this is going to be a great city for them and it's, it's going to continue. So, so that's really why I'm, I'm putting my hat in the ring, so to speak. I, as a lawyer now, I bring the skills of an advocate and a problem solver. That's what I want to see in a counselor mm -hmm. and that's really why I'm running. I, I think that with my background both in with political science and with working at the city and then I've actually I've worked with the federal government as well when I was in law school in Ottawa and now working as a lawyer and understanding municipal issues and people's issues from mm -hmm. that and how to solve problems um, and how to advocate for people I think that I bring the, the complete package of skills to benefit the residents of Ward 1 and the city. Okay. I know should you get in is it going to be status quo uh, with the lawyer's job or are you going to step uh, away from that? And then the, the second part to that question is uh, how are you going to maintain sort of a, a conduit between your constituents and yourself? How, how are they going to like uh, contact you and keep the communication going? Excellent question. If, if I recognize that the, even though it's not full-time pay, the counselor job is effectively a full-time job. So the way that I would treat it is the council responsibilities would be my primary responsibilities and I would effectively be a full-time counselor, but also I would be a part-time lawyer, so I would continue my job as a lawyer, um, but the council responsibilities would have to come first because I owe that to the 17,000 or so residents of Ward 1 if they choose to elect me. Okay, and then uh, I should have asked, uh, shouldn't have asked them both at the same time, how are you going to keep the lines open? Uh, we've had one uh, a guy say he's going to have a, a storefront office, or are you just going to have email, Twitter, Facebook, uh, here's my number? Uh, you know, I, I, I sorry, I'm sorry for missing that part of the question, but yeah, I, I'll keep the lines open both in the traditional ways and the modern ways. So my phone's always available, you can always contact me and, and I will either pick up the phone or if I'm in a meeting at the time, I'll get back to you and we'll discuss your issues. But of course, I'll also use the modern ways. So I'll also use email, I'll also use, people want to 
contact me by Facebook, I'm happy to do it that way. I, I haven't quite jumped on the Twitter bandwagon like yourselves yet. I guess I'm still in the stone ages of, of Facebook and typewriters. You're, you've but, got a great Facebook page. <laughs> well, 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 thank you. So, so I'll certainly use those modern approaches as well. And, and frankly, as much as anything, if, if a resident contacts me, I, I'm happy to go out and meet with them or have them come in and we'll meet in the office at, at City Hall and, and we'll, we'll figure out whatever, whatever works for the resident, whatever is the resident's best way of communication is what I intend to use for that resident. Okay, this has been fantastic. I really enjoyed it. So 30 seconds to wrap it up. Well, well thank you very much for having me. Um, I want to also say uh, an early Thanksgiving to you and an early Thanksgiving to your, uh, to your, to your viewers. And I, I want to invite residents to have a look at my website. My entire platform and background is on my website, www.danielablisser.com. In general, I want to hold the line on taxes, but get, all, but get back to the basics of our core municipal road and sewer infrastructure. You have my complete platform up on my website, so I invite you to look at that and contact me via the contact information on my website. Again, thank you so much for having me this morning. Of course, well, thanks okay. for coming on. Thanks, Daniel. He's running in Ward 1. Get out and vote.